Hey Gutesh, shall we start? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. A very pleasant uh, good evening to everyone. I'm Gurtej from Board Infinity and welcome you all to the new workshop in which you're going to learn about the data solving problem. And that's really amazing. And for this, we have today our best coach at Board Infinity, Ranjit Ma'am with us. Ranjit is a passionate and result-driven data science leader with the eight years of business and technology experience. She has set up 20 plus analytics processes for five plus fortune, 100 plus client. She was given the leadership award by managing the remote team for the great process setup. Being a data science senior manager in the e clerics, she uh, is currently handling a team of approximately 25 people. She is also leading the analytics community of practice at the e clerics, focused on upskilling and engaging with the 50 plus sessions, 80 plus competition, and 75 presenters involved. Interesting, she has been a visiting facility a member at the Symbiosis Institute as well. And uh, from the last four years, she has been serving with the uh, Institute. And 250 plus professional has been benefited from our course, Spreadsheet Modeling, which is also published on Udemy. So that's it's all about our coach. Uh, on the behalf of my entire team, I welcome everyone. And Ranjit, ma'am, thank you so much for taking out your valuable time to guide our learners. Thank you so much. Most welcome, Gurtesh. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the only difference is that I'm not Ranjit, I'm Rajneet, but I forgive you because 90% people uh, make that mistake anyways, right? So, um, hello everyone. I'm really excited to be with you all and thank you so much uh, for pulling in time from a Sunday evening today, right? Um, it's a big deal to have all of you joining in. Um, and I'm really excited. We are going to have a lot of fun together. Um, and before we proceed, I would like to also um, um, invite over Harsh. Uh, Harsh Kaur, I have requested her to be the co-host for today. So she will be helping us along. Um, so let's get started. Mm. This session is for you, regardless of you know whether you are a student, whether you are a data analytics professional already um, and working on different problem statements, whether you are a um, business professional, let's say a marketing professional or a operations manager who is trying to leverage analytics to uh, come up with better uh, uh, problem solving process and sharpen up processes in general, or whether you are an analytics leader, I promise you, we are going to have something that you will take away and that we will also summarize at the end, right? Um, uh, Analytics problem solving is that entire process uh, before maybe you uh, take up an AI ML model and deploy it uh, or rather even build it uh, before you do any kind of analysis, uh, right? So it's everything there. So how we have split it up is we'll be having a requirement gathering as a section. What is an insight, um, the process to do so, and then we're gonna have a lot of case studies to solve. Um, and along the way, we're gonna have a lot of activities, questions for you. I really hoping all of you do participate in the same. Um, also, I would like to explain that, uh, that these four sections will be stopping um, at bit intermittently between the sections to take up questions. Feel free at any point to put your questions in the chat window. And additionally, uh, between the sections, when we stop, uh, you can raise your hand. Uh, Gurtej will allow you to uh, uh, unmute yourself and you can ask questions through the audio route as well, right? Um, so this is something I keep telling my teams, right? Uh, data science is as much an art as science. Um, and hopefully today I'm going to break some of this art into sizable chunks that you can take away with you into scientific bits, and we will be able to convert some of this art to science. Yep, so this is one question I have for all of you. Please use the chat window or audio to explain uh, what is the biggest challenge or multiple challenges that you have faced in any project? Right, uh, it doesn't have go beyond analytics and AIML project. It can be any general IT project. It can be something you did it in college. It can be a construction project, anything, because really the biggest challenges remain consistent across. Uh, 
All right. Time management. Absolutely, very fair point. Communication. Let me perhaps. help you out here, Rajneet. Um, sure. Time sure. management is something which you have shared. Very interesting. Communication gaps. Yes. See, Ajay uh, is saying that. Yes, Ajay is saying that. Uh, Meer has said about time management. Mr. Surendra has mentioned about the senior management and customer are not involved in setting expectation and objectives. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Amol uh, thinks that there's a gap in understanding. Uh, uh, Rashika has added it's the data understanding. Uh, very interesting answers and great interactions. Mukul sees how this project can become business model. Mm -hmm. well, Maybe some uh, he wants to understand on this. And Kushagra thinks recently I face a challenge in every project is that whether the insights I'm getting are correct or not while making a project. So insights. Very I interesting question. And we are going to definitely answer that one. Anurup thinks understanding the whole picture before getting into details. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there's very a good lot point, Anurup. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Very much. Jishan thinks understanding the problem statement and data acquisition is a very uh, you know big uh, roadblock over here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gandhi feels data understanding and how to solve is an issue. Uh, Mr. Surendra again uh, feels uh, his added prerequisites sometimes are not clear. So mm -hmm. Paman feels that uh, we have to find out the right insights for this. Apurva thinks deriving actionable insights. Okay. Fair point. Uh, we have another ans answer from Mr. N. Patro, uh, data structure. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Amit answers project life cycle. Uh, Mr. Surendra has shared accepting aggressive deadlines. Okay, we are getting oh, so good ready. Point. I have 12, 13 yeah. more here. Great. Uh, Sriti feels companies over promising to the clients, then keeping unrealistic deadlines and expectation from the team. Hmm. And Akash also has something to add here in terms of the implementation challenges that comes up. And Mohit feels there is unsaid part or expectations of the project. Uh, Ranit feels that change in expectation every now and, and then. I think this is also something I want to learn hmm. from Rajneet. Uh, sure. Meet has added making scope for changes in requirement would be also an issue. And uh, Amol adds over here scope creep. Okay. Absolutely. I think That's very it. interesting answer and great interaction. And I also have something to hear, add over here. I feel there are times when there are lack of those relevant skills. Um, of course, unrealistic stakeholder expectations is already mentioned. And I think in different language, even uh, the kind of team dynamics, the concerns that may arise. I hope you read through the lines of what I've said. I think these are some yes. of the concern and um, yeah, I think we have done with, uh, you know, the kind of observations uh, that we have seen and yeah, there's one more um, regular and precise documentation. So yes, uh, you know, kind of capture. That's also yes. big one. Yes. Yes. So I think we have, we really have some very big challenges, Rajneet, and I think that set the expectations from you also of, you know, talking on these. <laughs> Over to you, dear. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, excellent points. And I am glad because a lot of these questions, especially before you start actual execution is something we're going to go through today, right? Uh, and to really end perfect, at least in, if you're in a service industry, serving a client, or even when you're working in an internal setup for your business stakeholders, one thing that's very important is the perfect start. And therefore, I think requirement gathering is very important. There are a lot of SDLC models that a lot of different um, IT documentation that is already there, but I feel that when it comes to analytics uh, projects, things change a little. Right, so I'm going to share what worked for me. And we would like to start with stories. So one thing that Gurdjieff did not tell y'all is that's okay. Everyone loves to tell stories, but I like telling them too. Right, everyone. Yeah. So this is story time, and let me introduce Bhumi to you, who was very excited about her business review with Vivek. Right, she and her team had delivered 500 forecasts in a month. It's gigantic. Right, and uh, this should, in her belief, strengthen the client-vendor relationships. 
So Bhumi is the uh, vendor and Vivek is the client. Let me also tell you, so Vivek is very senior. He's a VP in the client organization, but he was also very excited about this because this target setting exercise, it was the first time when AI ML kind of methodology was going to be used. Till now, it was more of straight line math, right? So another thing I would like to bring to your notice that Shanil from Vivek's team, so uh, a person that reports into Vivek had given all of these requirements to Bhumi and her team, right? Now, this is what happens during the business review. So she starts on to explain that we have used various ensemble techniques like Holtz Winter, Arimax, all of these methodologies as well, which are generally used in a time series context. And the average accuracy we have is about 90%, which given this data set is exceptional. She further adds that you have three options for each of the combination. So when I say combination for the three regions, five channels, 12 product groups, and that's why it's such a big number of 500 forecast. Now, given this uh, technical brilliant work, as well as doing it something that could be done in three months, doing that work in one month, it should have been really, it should have struck the chord with the client. It should have been a perfect win. But was it? Let's find out. So this is what he says. Vivek says, I'm not sure why you went for all the five channels. I only own web, right? So you should have just focused on them. Now, I want from this episode, all of you to take a few seconds and think in your mind, what do you think really went wrong? If you have to have a key takeaway, what would that be? Okay, so, okay, I think we, are we having answers as well? Um, Imperfect requirement gathering, absolutely, yes. Okay, Sriti also says that's not understanding the client requirement and yes. uh, Apurva is sharing its incorrect request intake and Gandhi feels she's not, not uh, discussed with the client. The client. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep, all of that is true. Uh, to maybe, focus on the final solution. Maybe the presentation, presentation was, okay. Continue. All right, did not understand the business of client. Okay. All of that is partially true, right? But for Bhumi, the key takeaway was this, right? A strong requirement gathering framework, right? Uh, and that has to be signed by the key stakeholders. When we say stakeholders, in this case, she had taken the request from Chanel, but it had to be really Vivek, who maybe on a minutes of meeting had to sign up that this is good. Go ahead and do it for all channels. And um, why this is even more interesting for me, guys, is in this scenario, Bhumi was me. And what was even more painful for me was that some of my team members had put in 10, 12 working hours over weeks to really meet the, this kind of a deadline, right? So yes, a, a mistake. But as long as we learn something from this mistake, um, it's, it's still a win, right? So this is what came out of my learning over there, the request intake framework. So let me start with uh, what are the elements what are the things you would want to take into this request intake? And um, before we even get there, this is what works in my scenario. Feel free to use a framework like this and customize it as per your business setup, as per your requirement, situation, client, all of those aspects, right? So like everything else in life, the most important question is why? What is the business objective? Why are we doing it? How are you going to consume it? Is there any specific trigger? This is a very special question that I like to ask. Is there a reason why we started doing this delivery or you're doing this exercise? Maybe in a, um, in a meeting with your senior leads, you had a question as a client or my, you know, as a senior person, you were given a question that you were not able to answer. And that's why we have started this piece of work. What are the decisions you will take end of the day through this, right? Um, 
you may or may not be given all of these answers but it is always worth asking them now there may be reasons why you may not be given it may be a too simple exercise a two hour data pull for example um it may be possible that for whatever reason they do not wish to disclose the real reason it is also possible that you are taking the request from a shanel who himself may or may not know the exact ways this is going to be consumed so they all hence themselves have not asked this question right so but as i said it's always worth to ask the question and identify the real problem so at this point uh, when we are talking about identifying the real problem um, i would like to call um, kurtej uh, ma'am there share. is a small video we want to share with the learners so yes yes could you please stop sharing the screen so that i can share the video yes yes uh yes so we're going to share a video guys which is going to be about understanding the real problem right so go ahead uh, good pitch a scene from moneyball a uh, gurtej uh, i am not able to hear is everyone else why when you share your screen you have to take up that option of uh, um, uh, uh, the audio the option audio, well. yeah audio is yeah actually volume is full Uh, no so when you share anything. your screen uh, you'll have to there is an uh, check box about uh, it being uh, audible or not you'll have to go for that option can you try resharing and select that check box sure sure so um in this scene we are really trying to so you can uh, think of this video that we see in your own setup we are trying to maybe uh, recruit employees um can we try now where the problem yes I mean, uh, can we just start, start from the beginning we're trying to solve the problem here but not like this you know you're not even looking at the problem I mean, we're very aware of the problem i mean okay good what's the problem <coughs> Look, Billy. We all understand what the problem is. We have to okay, replace. Okay, good. What's the problem? The problem is we have to replace three key players in our no. lineup. No. What's the problem? Same as it's ever been. We've got to replace these guys with what we have existing. No. What's the problem, Barry? We need 38 home runs, 120 RBIs, and 47 doubles to replace. The problem we're trying to solve is that there are rich teams and there are poor teams. Then there's 50 feet of crap, and then there's us. It's an unfair game. And now we've been gutted. Organ donors for the rich. Boston's taking our kidneys, Yankees taking our heart, and you guys are sitting around talking the same old good body nonsense like we're selling jeans. Like we're looking for Fabio. Think differently. We are the last dog at the bowl. You see what happens to the runt of the litter? he dies really that's a very touching story and everything but i think we're all very much aware of what we're facing here you have a lot of experience and wisdom in this room now you need to have a little bit of faith and let us do the job of replacing giambi is there another first baseman like giambi gotta... no not really no, no and if there was could we afford him no no nope. then what the fuck are you talking about man If we try to play like the Yankees in here, we will lose to the Yankees out there. Well, that sounds like fortune cookie wisdom to me, Billy. No, that's just logic. Who's Fabio? The shortstop. The shortstop from Seattle. Okay. All right. So, very interesting scene. I'm uh, not fully sure if. we all were able to hear it very well so the problem here uh, guys that they were facing was that they are a poor team competing with a much richer team and that can happen with our organizations right we may be let's say a, a analytics team competing with a much uh, more uh, uh, you know another organization which much better financial assets or we may our clients may be in that situation a lot of times we don't know what problems our clients are facing and uh, this is something that 
even before you try to get to the request, you should try to understand. Right. Uh, you should know beforehand what are the key problems. For example, in a marketing setup, the key problems we are looking for is how am I doing? Uh, um, what is the pricing strategy should I should I keep? What are the marketing spends I should go for? Right. To be able to meet my target. What are the initiatives I can take if I have a target in progress? Right. So very interesting movie. In fact, uh, Moneyball is one of those movies that um, I saw in an office setup because it's it's very analytical in nature. Uh, they end up taking decisions through an ML algorithm. So would uh, encourage all of you to see the entire one, right? Uh, but here we are on the request intake framework. Let me continue. Uh, so the second uh, area that we should look at is what, right? What is it that you are expecting as the final outcome? How do I even know that it is successfully completed? And that's why you need to have a success criteria, a completion criteria. What is the tool or technology or format that you're looking for? Um, is it going to be a PowerPoint? Is it going to be an Excel working file? Is it going to be an ML model, right? Um, how are you going to consume it even? Uh, the format, it is going to be different if it is an execute, executive audience, right? It, sometimes they might want it in their template. So those things also take time, right? And finally, what are the dimensions, filters that you would want us to, you know, look at? So it, it's possible that uh, you might find some answers that you're looking for at a country level, but at other points, you might need to do it at the store level. So all of that is something that you need to ask, right? And if there are default dimensions and filters that you apply every time, you can definitely pre-fill this. You can do it yourself, right? And get a confirmation from the client. So, Another story uh, to explain this what bit, right? So, Pyle sent a mail to Subho to prepare for Brian's review, which was uh, the next day. Uh, so, in this scenario, uh, Pyle is the client and uh, Brian is her uh, manager, right? So, this is what she writes. It was a long, exhausting day. So, she sent out a quick mail saying, sales is trending red for week 12. Please send all possible reasons send it to me before 9 a.m. CST and we'll have a catch up then, right? So this is what Subho uh, days look like. So he logs in at 12 p.m. IST. So they are both in different time zones uh, and 9 a.m. CST is really 7.30 p.m. IST. So he really has just seven and a half hours. So he hurriedly began his data pool. He had a lot of questions, guys. First of all, what does trending red even mean? It can mean that week over week you're reducing in numbers or it can mean that, you know, whatever your target is, you've not been able to meet your target. So it can have many definitions when we are saying trending red. Um, what level of data do, what granularity of data do I pull, right? Uh, why are we doing that? He did not have that clarity, but he had to give some output in seven hours. So there was really no time to go back for questions. So, during the call, he starts the review and starts explaining what he found. He says EMEA as a region has fallen year over year by 20%. One of our new product launches called product Pandora, uh, we, whatever we had in mind, it's not performing as per expectations, right? Uh, and offline as a channel also, it's reducing uh, year over year about 15%. Now, all of this is good. So Payal, uh, what she says is interesting. Can you add store level findings as well? Because offline channel is not performing well and send it to me in two hours time. Now, frankly, what Subo says is, I haven't pulled the data at store level because pulling it at uh, store level would have maybe meant data being 100 times more, right? Because let's say there is an average uh, of 100 stores, right? Uh, per country or whatever. And that would have taken me the entire day. I can do that by tomorrow and send. Now, like everyone in life, both these characters are right in their own places, right? For Subho, he did not have that clarity. It was a quick call. And by the way, my teams uh, get such mails all the time, right? So it may be one, two, one days or two days. Uh, so uh, there needs to be a better process, right? Uh, what Subo feels is that if I had pulled that much of data, I would have no time at all to execute. But what Payal thinks is, oh, I have this call with Brian now. 
right in a couple of hours i don't have real actionable findings yet so what do i go to him with i can tell him of course that uh, my team is uh, finding store level things and uh, but in two days time i'll send you an action plan on how we are going to correct such things right uh, but yes in during the review it could have been a win for her but it won't be right so uh, here is what subo takes away from this right so to reduce rework and doing things literally five times i need to think of a way to get all filters and dimensions when the request is sent the first time right so that is the second bit where we were about the what aspect that you need to be clear with what level of data you are trying to chase right let's move on the next is the who very interesting because uh, the people dynamics is always very interesting and always full of learning so is your audience going to be an execution one or an executive audience is it going to be a business person or a technical person who is the requester and who is the consumer right um, you are going to probably send a more finished product when it's a bp who is going to end of the day consume it uh, you might want to find crisp uh, findings in a powerpoint rather than have a working file shared um, in the story that we saw with bumi uh, the requester and consumer were two different people the consumer was going to be vivek but the person who had given that request was shanil and they themselves did not they were themselves not in on the same page and you'll be surprised how often that happens between even two people who are in the same team so it's better whoever is going to consume if you can get the findings through them or at least signed off through an mom right that is something that we love the fourth aspect is when by when do you want what is the expected completion time what is the eta right and how high on priority it is this was one of the problems i think most of what we see here is some problem that we had seen earlier right so um what will often happen is that you are said okay this is priority 1 do it in 3 days and you will calculate in your mind okay 2 and 1/2 days is what i need 3 days i can push and do it right uh, with a little bit buffer then uh, your stakeholder will come back the next day and say this is also priority 1 now do this in 5 days so the first one that you took up it was priority 1 and you were going to give your entire time now another priority one it's going to take more than maybe 5 days right so you need to constantly do this prioritization activity and if there are too many high priority items you need to request or ask your stakeholder to put something else on medium or low priority right and that priority angle has to come with the when because your eta for a priority one may be 3 days uh, versus a priority three may be 7 days right so it's going to depend on that and keep ample amount of buffer like at least a 20 30% buffer extra time uh, for failure various types of failures can happen right so but the exact uh, you know buffering that you do uh, extra time that you ask for will depend on your exact situation right your exact client stakeholder the kind of work you do yeah so that's the when bit and finally the how so um, when it comes to the how uh, we are talking about any specific processes that you need to follow to get to the data or get to to any for any element is there specific filters that you need to apply um, sometimes one of our clients may say don't use this db or this table use another table so those kind of things you need to clarify and i would like to share another interesting episode here so uh, just last week one of my clients was telling me that his business stakeholder had uh, ha was questioning why did this ticket take 6 months to do it was raised in november and we've been able to complete it now so he was saying that the data itself was not available for 5 and 1/2 months out of that 6 months right so you need to make sure that whatever you like in terms of data in terms of data mapping between two tables such things verify before setting up any of the eta right so that uh, is the end of section 1 i'll be happy to take up any questions before we proceed 
So use the chat window and uh, you can definitely raise your hand and we'll unmute you. And if you're able to unmute, go ahead. Uh, we can start taking questions before we proceed to the second section. Uh, Rajni, hi, this is Amol here. Uh, hey, Amol. Very nice session. Uh, I, uh, I have a very basic question. A lot of times, uh, uh, the clients that we interact with are, uh, you know, uh, not open to adhering to some frameworks or they might have a lot of things on their plate as well to mm -hmm. kind of, uh, you know, comply to some of these kind of uh, frameworks yes. or requests. How yes. do we get the clients to, you know, uh, to help them uh, or basically help us help them better or following these, by following these kind of frameworks? How do you think would be the right way to approach this problem? Sure. Uh, excellent and very relevant question, Amol. So um, even today, not all of my clients are using this. So first thing is uh, they might not comply because there is a lot of information to fill. So from that aspect, what um, I ask my teams to do is pre-fill all the information you have. If there are four filters, let's say country level at product level that we all, always use, just put them in and use one of the calls that we have set up to get the other questions. So don't send them as a mail and ask them to fill it and send. That's one thing that helps, right? Um, second thing is every time you, you are made to do rework, like in this particular scenario, uh, the episode that I shared uh, about the last, one of our clients last week sharing the six month uh, dilemma, right? At that point I pitched him. Okay, so when they are in a real need, they'll see the value better. So what I did once we thought uh, that we should start implementing is every stakeholder, I have one-on-ones with them. So I, uh, with these client stakeholders in the one-on-one, -on -one, I took them through it. I gave a couple of reasons why we required a couple of situations where instead of two weeks, we could have done it in three days, right? If we had all of this in the first go. But yes, we should not expect them to really comply by it, it has to be us managers uh, who have to ensure that our, first of all, our own team is convinced about it, right? Our own teams pick up the early adopters from our team who you know will understand the importance of such processes, who will make things happen. Do it through them first, show the success to other people, other team members, because it has to be our team uh, who who has to work with us to get all of this done, right? So those are a couple of things that I feel will work well. And don't give up. It's going to take, it's taken many months to reach a level where almost every clients are using it in some shape or form. Thank you. That helps, yeah. Okay, uh, do we have any questions in the short? Yeah. What do, what you do when customers give very short deadline in previous story. Yeah, uh, some of it is uh, controllable, right? Uh, some of it is not, right? So if you have a one day deadline, what in this scenario, maybe Shubo and Pile scenario, we couldn't have done anything like, uh, because it was too short, but the next time something like this happens. So what should be done is uh, that between Shubo and Payal, they decide that by default, whenever you give me a request, I'm going to uh, get the data at this granularity, I'm going to use this format, that kind of a thing. And it will also help if Shubo or if the manager takes Payal through the, the request elements, the request intake framework, and she also understands the value it will bring, right? So it's more about making the next time correct. What in my case, client agreed to pay for rework. Uh, okay, uh, that's good, uh, Ajay. If your uh, client is agreeing to pay for the rework, but that is okay. So, see, this request intake framework one objective is to make sure that you are doing things uh, correct the first time over a period of time at least. The second is to explain rework also, right? So, uh, they might pay for it, but at least my clients or Amol, uh, when he was explaining, his clients will always ask, why did we take two weeks? So at least at that point, you can say, I asked these questions right in the beginning. I was not told to do X, Y, Z. And then every time you uh, get, I mean, that scope creep happens or you get additional elements, you at least have data points to explain why it took two weeks, right? So, yeah. 
how can you handle multiple ad hoc requests that come while you are also handling clients? So, Hemant, can you just unmute yourself? I'm not sure I understand the questions because we are always having multiple ad hoc requests. So let's say, for example, that you're trying to solve various problems for your clients, mm -hmm. right? And you have certain scope, okay? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. within the scope, obviously, there are certain things that are written and mm -hmm. that are not written, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what... Uh, uh, typically happens is the clients will come up and say that hey uh, can you also do this for me my qbr yes. is coming can you uh, create presentations for me and all that obviously you cannot go ahead and say no because mm -hmm. you have to have that client delight in place yes. so i mean how how let's say you have a very small team let's say five six folks who are basically solving yes. problems for you so how will you handle these kind of problems see generally what i would do is pull up that uh, tracker this uh, tracker, project tracker again and say these are the high items, these are the medium priority items and low priority items that you've set. Can we reprioritize a little so that I'm able to help you for your QBR before the other items? Uh, generally, if you explain why things need time, you are yourself, you, you might, I mean, of course, for client delight and sometimes they're in, in a situation where you want to extend a little, but you have to explain to them what is feasible and what is not. They generally do reprioritize and tell you, let's do this first and that one later. Right, but working with clients is anyways, always going to be a uh, difficult place, right? So, yes. Okay, thanks, Hemant. Uh, any questions, Sarge, that we are that I've missed? Uh, Rajin, one question, Apurva here. Yes, so, Apurva, yeah, mm -hmm. apart from priority, there is one more thing, and that is the seriousness or the importance, like how serious a client is about the request. Like recently, mm -hmm. we have faced, like we uh, invested a lot of time, we did a lot of things, and client's reaction was, uh, I think you guys are too serious, don't think too much. Rather, you should have focused on uh, the other requests. So that is one thing apart from priority, how to deal with, how to ask client how important this is to you, how, how much time, how much energy we should invest in this good question uh, yes so i think whenever we have a catch-up uh, we should ask uh, ask them which are the most important for you and ideally the person who is paying for a project or who is uh, our direct stakeholder their priorities should be our priorities so sometimes those gaps may come let's say if you have not uh, been i mean if they were not available in the last two weeks whatever request we got we started working on them but uh, yes that's possible uh, i think it's more about having that dialogue with them about what is more important to you i'll just add one thing harsh here uh, over here what i see maybe you know a constant of course we will be but a constant engagement with the client and the different stakeholders uh, within the client also sometimes helps when you know there are changes uh, in the requirement seriousness and the priority so uh, i think it's very critical that we continuously also be in touch uh, you know every few days few weeks find ways to you know be in touch with them Correct. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the answer. All right. Any other questions before we proceed, guys? So insights generation related coming up next. Okay. All right. Um, let's continue, uh, guys. So now we're going to insight, right? Insight is a buzzword that you will be hearing all the time now and clients and senior business, business stakeholders want uh, hard hitting insights, right? Uh, from us now, right? And really lack of insight will lead to lack of engagement. Every time in a call and whatever analysis you might have done, you might show, uh, you're going to be asked this question, what is the recommendation? What are the key takeaways? What is the insight coming out of this, right? So, uh, let me start with an overview, right? Um, so I want all of you to think what really is an insight. Use, feel free to use the chat window uh, to answer it. Uh, and what it is not also, if you want to share, uh, that is also perfectly okay. Hush, could you read out the answers? 
Sure. Uh, based on the results we got from data, can we use any? Okay, this is a question actually. Trial and error to develop any additional uh, necessary solutions in data. So why don't we take this question few minutes later, and we have got an answer also. Insights sure. are actionable inputs. Absolutely. Very precisely put by Ajay. As per Gagandeep, it's some useful information which is not prominent uh, or I think which is not obvious. Very true. Tripti feels something that can help us to summarize the data. I think, yeah, that's a great input. And Apurva has also added here something which is not easily seen and needs deep dive. Yes, of course. Uh, Dr. Heyman says, recommend one second, I'll have to go a little up one second. Um, Dr. Heyman feels recommendations are actually the actionable inputs for strategic decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, Anshul has added analyzing information is insight. And mm -hmm. among things, according to me, insights are underlying trait or issue unraveled. I think I loved the words used here. Yes. Uh, Abdul uh, says that insights are the relation between data to goal. Okay, I, I like this analogy as well. Okay. Uh, and Patro feels Makes to sense. understand the KPI of the uh, business or the key performance indicators. I think I, I love this answer. And Bikram says the capacity to gain an accurate and deep understanding of someone or something. Yes, that's true. The hidden information is also an insight. Yes. Reading through the lines, I think that is the reason it's sometimes required. Uh, uh, Surindra, Mr. Surendra feels something not known, but very high value. Yes, high value. Absolutely. Uh, Mohammed, fee, Mohammed Asim feels something which helps in business, uh, business decisions. Yes, it helps. Inside helps in uh, decision making and like previously said, actionable inputs. Uh, Deepak says small hints that helps to uh, solve the big puzzle or hear the business problem. And uh, Gandhi also has to add over here, according to me, to get company profit, we have to use insights. Yes, so I think there yeah. are a lot of objectives, you know, of uh, how insights help and what is an insight that has been shared. I think great interactions. I'm just loving this session. So this one is going to be really quick because uh, between the entire uh, uh, audience here, we clearly have every element of an insight, right? Um, so Rajin, sorry I'm going to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. There's one more answer. Specific mm -hmm. cause effect on any context data that we have. I think that's also another way to look at it. And uh, that was through Tripti. And Chahat has mentioned deep understanding about any particular topic. Over to you. Sure. Great, great. Uh, very good inputs. Uh, and I'm actually very surprised because this is far more than I had expected. Uh, that is an insight for me. And uh, uh, I'm going to actually start with what is not an insight. Uh, so it, it, let's rather enjoy what an insight not is. A quick uh, uh, comic for all of you. It's not data. It's not technologies. It's not different jargons, right, uh, that we may want to you, uh, see. And... Uh, It's not even an observation or any finding, right? Uh, some of you so rightly put, it is something, if I have to summarize an insight in one line, it's going to be always this visual that I remember. I'm making a decision, your stakeholder is telling you, stop confusing me with facts. In one liner, it, it kind of summarizes very beautifully. So this is what an insight is not. Um, it has to be something that helps you take better decisions. If if not, Rajin, then this is not an insight. Rajin, just to add, Swapnil feels it's the also the ability to perceive clearly or deeply. So sure. happy to still see the answers. And Dr. Heyman feels which client already does not know. Exactly. That is very important, right? So Sumit, it, I'm sorry that I will yeah, continue Harshan at the end, probably will. Um, but you have to hear this answer. Information which is surprising, yeah. big and actionable. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So you already have the checklist I was going to share. So right? this is by um, Sumit, by the way. Okay, great, great. All right. So um Generally, insight generation involves working with multiple data points, multiple observations to come 
to a pattern, some kind of evidence. It has to be surprise. It has to be actionable, right? Uh, the process, generation process. I'm going to uh, give a very brief summary here because we are going to get into the generation process in a lot of detail, right? You have to start with the primary objective or the business objective, which may be very vague, like how are we performing? And break that into sections, chunks, secondary objectives, analytical objectives, whatever word you use for it, that can be answered through data, right? And there are a lot of useful frameworks that can come to answer this. We are going to delve into this section in a lot of depth, right? Um, I would also like to briefly summarize um, how do we best story tell an insight? Uh, this is a sec uh, section that next Sunday, the same time, I'm going to do data storytelling in a lot of depth. But in case you're not attending still, we are, there are so many different uh, user types, right? Uh, they Who, who would uh, consume content in different ways. Someone is a visual person. That person sees a chart and automatically understands in a jiffy what we're trying to say. Another person may not be that comfortable. They may rather see the number in a table. And a third person or maybe a more busy person would want you to uh, summarize that in one liner crisp English about what it is that we're trying to tell them, right? So ideally, when you're doing the storytelling of an inside, you should cater to all different uh, user groups and have a mix of all of this. Um, generally, a horizontal uh, you know, line at the top uh, so after your uh, subject uh, title, let's say of the uh, of the slide, if you add one or two liner about the context and about the uh, um, about the methodology, if required, and the results, the recommendation it generally helps, right? So the one thing that if I were you, I would have been thinking is it's okay. I think we kind of you know. Uh, understand in words what an insight is, but would you like to have a checklist for that? I'm hoping the answer is yes, right? A beautiful checklist by S. Anand, who is the CEO and co-founder of Graminer. So it's everything that you said. It's rather in one place, you create a checklist and it's a check activity. Is the insight big, useful, surprise? If it's a tick mark for all three of them, go ahead and share it with your client, right? So when we are talking about big, it has to be a large number. The impact has to be huge. When we are saying useful, some action needs to be taken. And when it's surprising, it's non-obvious, right? Everything that you all really said. So a um, few examples of what an insight may not qualify, right? APEC region increased by 1.3%. 1.3% is not big enough to call out as an insight. Um, APAC is a huge region. If you were telling me something at a country level, at a city level, at a store level, maybe I could do something about it, but I cannot change everything. It's not actionable at all, right? And it's not even surprising because if you take this to your stakeholder, maybe they would already know this. Uh, there are tons of BI reports that your stakeholders are used to seeing. So these top level findings, they, will, they would have seen way before you even started analyzing things, right? Similarly, sales of crackers shooting up during Diwali by 158%, right? So 158%, it's a large impact. But is it actionable? Can you change Diwali the month as per your need? Is it surprising even? Did you not already know this, right? We all knew. We have all bought different crackers, right? So maybe if you're a marketing manager who's trying to optimize your promotional mix and let's say you recently started investing in some of the new media like LinkedIn. This might be more actionable. So let's say your sales recently spiked. So instead of 100 units, 120% spike. So you're now selling 220 units. What you might find surprising, good enough, large and useful, actionable, is that because you started investing in LinkedIn and the return of investment there is 2.3, you're seeing that increase in numbers, right? So now what you can do with this is probably invest more in LinkedIn, right? Um, so that's the checklist uh, that we are talking about. Um, now, one thing I would like to call out is, it's a very simple and beautiful uh, framework, but uh, 
coming to this, this exercise is not that simple, you know, because especially the surprising big, big number, uh, I think that's very simple to put, but surprising, how something that's surprising for me very often has not been surprising to my client, right? So you need someone who is a domain expert or over a period of time, when you've spent a few months with your client, you start understanding their business better, their problems better, right? So um, another example, uh, if my client is a marketing manager and I tell them that if you change the pricing this much, you're going to do better. It's not useful for them, right? So you need to understand what exactly is the role, the challenge they are in. Um, and accordingly, over a period of time, this checklist activity will become easier, right? So um, we are at the end of section two, guys. And uh, um, the question that probably would be in your mind, nice, now I know what an insight is, but how do I even generate an insight? That is something that I'm going to cover in section three. And before we go ahead, uh, I'm happy to take any questions you may have. I think we can go ahead, Rajneet. Great. Okay. So um, this is another activity, right? Uh, let's say your CEO asks, how are we performing? Just this. How are we doing? How will you approach this question? How will you try to answer it? Any answers? Anyone would like to unmute and share? Uh, hi, I can share something. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sajjan. Like, uh, if the question is that how are we performing, then the answer has to be in terms of some metrics. Like, uh, uh, it may be related to costs like in my case it is the cost absorption rate is there or some productivity is there in case uh, there's some HR related thing or mm -hmm. uh, something so some mm -hmm. metric which is relevant to the uh, practice and the project and that's absolutely how perfect so uh, in terms me... of your KPIs you'll try to answer something makes sense yes Ash, go ahead. thanks Ajay uh, let's let's have a few answers which are there also in the chat box uh, Mohit is uh, considers quant quantify or tell the numbers or percentage of uh, growth and dips. I think I like this answer. Uh, very true. Um, Kaganti says it's yes or no followed by facts. Anshul thinks it's the need to understand the parameters. He needs this more information to answer this question. Sure, Anshul, we get there. Yes. Um, Tripti says by highlighting the key task done, the percentage increase or decrease in sales. I think I like this. Anshul says it's neat. Okay, yeah, need to understand the parameters. Okay, and Saurabh uh, says it's using the sales data, you know, kind of MEM. Sure, sure. Okay, oh, so see, I, I think I'm getting the flavor of what um, thinking everyone is having and perfect in place, right? Um, and uh, some of you also uh, stated about uh, KPIs, numbers, that all of that is good. But you cannot say a yes or no till you compare two numbers, right? Yes. 115 uh, minutes. I'm is... sorry, but uh, there are a few more answers. Let me quickly just take it up. I'm so sorry. Uh, Deepak says it's the key metric, annual versus actual versus planned. If going as per plan, then all well. And Mohammed feels uh, actually need more details for this question. Okay, fine. Then you're going to anyways answer. And I think uh, like you had mentioned in the key requirement intake, the success criteria. And of course, the key performance indicators. Uh, so I think that is from my side. Yes. Okay. I'll over to you. All right. So let's say we are in we are a marketing team, sales and marketing team, right? Um, 150 million is what we made. Uh, it's not good or bad, right? Till you do not compare something against another number, you can't say it's a yes or no. But you can compare it against many numbers, right? So this is how. I would have approached this. And there are many ways of approaching. This is just one of them. So this is your primary business objective. Generally, it's very vague. It's so open, right? Some of you ask for more information. So uh, once you know the business more, 
you'll know what are the data objectives or the analytics objectives or the secondary objectives much better right so you have to break this question into things that can be answered through data so some of them would be this right how am i doing across time so my sales if it's 150 million now what is the year over year change so let's say you have increased year over year by 10% that's good not bad at all let the second bit would be about target so every organization whether marketing sales or customer support right you will have some targets that is going to end of the day lead to some amount of either additional uh, revenue or cost savings right so what is whatever your target was if your target was 100 and you did just 90 then your attainment percentage uh, the term that is present here is 90% so then uh, in that scenario 90% is not that good right so even though you grew compared to your last year 10% you have still not achieved your target another angle to look at that would be how am i doing compared to my market or my competitors so what's my market share if it was 23% last year hopefully i'm not lower than that right so um the way to answer the question can be multifold and this is still a simpler part right uh, there can be a far more complicated question that you may have and the one of the way that works well for me is using some kind of a business framework so breaking that primary to secondary objective through a framework right uh, i'm going to take some of the business frameworks i've even written an article on how you can we can use business frameworks uh, to solve analytical problems uh, which harsh will be sharing in the chat window I'll explain a few, but this session really isn't enough to go through everything. So I'll give you a few examples, and uh, um, we'll be taking a snapshot of this. You can also feel free to take one and uh, um, read up on them more later. Yeah. So the first one. Uh, so I'm a marketer by heart, and uh, marketing frameworks. I love using them all the time, and there has been a lot of marketing analytics that I've been lucky to do as well. So. one of the ways i split is 4p for example product price place promotion so design your questions according to how has things changed with the product in pricing strategy uh, place can be a geography area it can be online offline channel right um, and promotion are you spending more or less than last year has your market mix changed those kind of questions uh, that can be further answered through data another framework that works well is pareto so generally when you're trying to optimize things right um, pareto or the 80 20 rule what it basically means is let's say uh, 80% of the world's riches are held by 20% of the people right or 80% of uh, taxes are paid by 20% of the people now it doesn't have to be 80 and 20 even though that's the name it can be 1 and 99% and it can even be 2 and 56 right so it doesn't even have to be adding to 100% all it simply means is that it's the rule of vital few so if you want to change something change with the bigger chunks right so if i have to clean up my room uh, for me pareto is just wrapping up my bed sheet half my room starts looking clearer just by doing that one change so that is the uh, way to think uh, in some of the optimization related Problem. it's a very simple rule but it works well um another thing that works well is a 2 by 2 matrix right so an example here is a bcg or the boston consulting group matrix where um you have two parameters one here being market growth um and uh, growth rate and the other being your penetration or your market share so uh something that's growing very well as well as a high penetration is called the star right so uh, what this kind of a framework does is it divides you you can of course have a 3 by 3 matrix or number of uh, different parameters but what it really does is you can have a different decision or action and how just you know four boxes is something you have to cater to um uh, clients find that really uh, you know easy to consume and it's also very beautiful it's very actionable right and simple at the same time there are a lot of analytical frameworks as well right like 
hypothesis testing, cost benefit, cost benefit analysis, doing five why, asking the why question till you at least five times or more, right? Um, recency frequency monitory is used a lot in the retail world. So there are a lot of different analytical frameworks and I'm warning you when I press next, there are going to be more uh, visuals. This slide is going to become very heavy. So now is not the time to ask questions about all of them, but feel free to take a snapshot and read up on them. Even in the article that I've written, I have linked up quite a few of them. So um, just having knowledge of all of this, it really makes solving problems easier, right? So there we are at the end of this section. Um, happy to take any questions, but let me tell you, I'm going to, the case studies that we are now going to start with, I'm going to use a lot of business frameworks. So if you have questions regarding specifically their definition or understanding, some of them are going to get answered. Rajin, we had a question from Naveen. Can we elaborate answer in single sentence like business, then target, and then goal? Navin, do you want to unmute yourself and explain um, what you are trying to say? Yes, exactly. Like the previous slide, uh, you said for the business and target. Mm -hmm. So I want to know about this. Like, can we elaborate answer in the single sentence for like business requirement and after target and after achieved goal? Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm still not very clear. So what do you mean when you say business target goal? Like uh, uh, you have said the, shared the like previous screen, na, CEO asking how, right. how are we performing? Mm -hmm. So what was that the uh, answer? Can we elaborate in a single sentence or uh, can you just give in a brief, this brief uh, detail, what will be the answer for performing? Sure. See, so in that particular case, let's say that uh, I grew 10% year over year. My market share is consistent, but I still did not meet my targets. Uh, the one-liner summary would be that, um, yes, we have grown. So I would say maybe, yes, we are performing well, though we could not meet the targets, right? That would be the first summary. And then your CEO would want to know why have we not been able to target and what can we do about it? Right. And interestingly, that also is something that I'm going to explore in this case study, right? How, what, what changes can we do so that it doesn't repeat? So your one liner summary, see, it, it could be a yes or no. In some uh, companies, a 90% uh, uh, attainment is also good because they give you very high targets, right? While in others, if you do below 100, it may not be acceptable. So it depends. It could be a yes because you've grown over last year. Uh, and if your company is okay with 90, which generally sales organizations are, uh, as far as I know, um, and if they're not acceptable, then your answer is going to be no. At the end of the day, it's going to be the target that's going to be no. Okay. Yeah, thanks, ma'am, for your concern. Okay, there is some background noise uh, on my end. If it's uh, disturbing, that's yeah. just... Thanks, ma'am, for your answer. Yes. What is? Sure. Okay. Let me proceed, uh, guys. So, uh, I hope uh, so there is some background noise. I hope it's not uh, disturbing all of you too much. Right? Um, yeah. So, exactly the question we left at, right? Why is attainment only 90%? So if I were asked this question, and in fact, for one of, uh, um, you know, uh, Fortune 50 clients, we were working for, I was working with for a US uh, channel uh, marketing team. And the way we went about answering this question at a weekly level was this, right? We actually, I actually implemented the 4P, 4P framework. So when it comes to product, the kind of questions that we had, uh, we tried to answer weekly level is, has the product mix changed, first of all? So uh, let's say I am selling A, B, and C, three products in equal proportion of 33.33%. Has that changed? Has the, you know, maybe the higher price one gone up or the lower price one gone up? So what is the mix? Is it still consistent? Second thing could be, are there any new launches? 
um, are there uh, that could be our own launch or it could be a competitor launch so it's possible that the attainment is lower because a new product our own launch did not perform as expected or it could also be that a competitor launch is eating our market share right similarly price has your average pricing changed are there any discounts that you were doing last year or maybe few weeks earlier and not doing now right when it comes to place they could be questions like how are we doing in terms of the region level then at a country level at a city level and you can even go more granular and of course we can do the same thing for online channel also how are we doing across different channels like search linkedin social media right and um, also see how online offline channel in general are doing right uh, so these questions you have to customize as per your exact requirement right finally promotion are we spending similar to what we had done last year is it higher is it lower right um, are there again medium exchanges so like we saw in an insight now i am going to spend far higher in linkedin so the proportion the media mix on linkedin is going to go up and one of the things that you also want to look at when you're looking at promotion what is the roi of each of these promotions right so what we would do is we would try to organize the data around this four piece they could be different uh, tables different sheets or they could be one table where i have each of these right and let's say from all of this data exercise uh, which a lot of you are already experts in what we find is that you know online channel it's growing versus last year we are doing 7% better right uh, I, i still have a good return on investment but your offline has gone down by 15% now in that scenario what we have been able to do using this first cut is we have been able to identify the first layer root cause right offline now what i want to do is i want to focus more on the offline channel right so uh, let's say that because so you the roi term that's used for offline or, or for advertisement in general is return on ad spends so because the return on ad spends or the roi of offline channel has been decreasing we have taken as an organization or your client has decided that we are going to reduce the spends there okay and we are going to redirect the some of that spends to the online world so how do i go about deciding where in the offline channel to reduce the spend so let me take you through uh, that and all of this that i'm showing is something that i've been able to implement so it's completely doable right so um what we do is um, i'm going to show you a chart where we are going to apply pareto now so i'm going to organize uh, all the different sites or stores whatever we would want to call it in a decreasing order of revenue and margin okay so how we would read this graph is that um, the top 5% of my sites are giving me 20% of the revenue and 15% of total margin okay whereas if you see the last 5 10% they are not giving me any revenue in margin so let's assume that you were so far of course you were smart enough not to spend in all the 100 Uh, stores but you were spending in 50 of them now because you have been able to organize this in a decreasing fashion right i know my first 5% are going to be those vital few first 10% 15% are going to maybe those be those vital few right so the recommendation i provided was that you can literally reduce the spends to half okay Th these optimized sites and even though you are only going for 50% of the sites you're still getting equivalent of the 66% revenue two third that is revenue and 60% margin right which means your return on investment is going to go significantly higher up so this is one way how pareto we were able to apply right now let's say you are able to see that the different sites they're not giving you similar amount of uh, return on investment right so the amount you are investing you are not getting an equivalent return in all of them so let's say i want to further within this 25% also optimize more so 
I will simply plot how much I'm spending in the X axis, right? And go and see how much is the revenue lift, which means if I'm spending $1 and if my revenue lift is two, that means my advertisement is giving me $2 extra worth of revenue. So that much more buying is happening. So we've plotted all of these different um, stores. And what we see is that most of them follow a linear line. So it's a simple, very simple linear regression. And most of them are following this line. Um, but you see that there are these two uh, sites that are on the below side of the line. And there are these three that are on the above, right? I'll give you a few seconds to think, what would you want to do about it? Okay. All right. So this is what I would do. Yeah. Just this the, is, so yes. sorry, dear. Uh, uh, Mohammed has add. Okay. Oh, no, no. Uh, I think uh, you can. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, answering that. Can we consider these as outliers? Okay. See, uh, you can, but this is not a statistical exercise, right? So this is a business exercise. So what I would do here is reduce some amount of spends. So see, this is a quadrant now. So this is our two by two matrix that we've been able to create where the yellow ones, we are not going to take any actions because the return on investment is as per expectation. But when you see the other two, right? So the low lift and the high spends, which means that you are investing a lot, but you're not getting back that. These kind of, uh, you know, uh, sites, I'm going to reduce the spend a little and put it into this bucket where it is giving me a very good return on investment. And that's how without even spending a single more penny, I can still earn in the end, do more sales uh, and save, um, I mean, get more money, right? So outliers also you should treat if you have a strong reason for them, right? Uh, in this scenario, we do not, correct? So. Yes, and that is how using a two by two matrix, you've been able to take a decision as, and I, as I was telling you, clients really like to, I mean, it's very, it becomes very simple that I'm doing differential actions uh, in this. And two by two matrix is something that can be used in a variety of different situations. Your parameters can change as per your case study, right? So hopefully with this, um, whether it is Vivek, whether it's Payal, they're far happier. They've been able to win far more with Brian or with their business uh, uh, case study, right? So I have uh, a question coming up for you. It's Rajneet, a I'm sorry. Uh, just in lines to what were your thoughts, Bikram says, assign value to your conversation action. Think about the lifetime value of your customer and the steps along your customer journey. Just thought I should share before we move to the next yeah. section. Yes. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, please, you can, uh, all the yes. people have started answering. Maybe you can still uh, put down, put on the question. Friends, let's have uh, a minute more for you to poll and just a simple question uh, of your opinion. Do the marks of the students depend on the month they were born? If you think okay. it's a yes, mark it. If you think it's not, or maybe it's a maybe, uh, you can mark it similarly. So far, um, 33 out of 42 people have a three-fourth, a good three-fourth are saying, no, why would it? Okay. All right. Um, can we have someone who's saying a yes or a maybe unmute and tell why? Yeah. Hi, this is Vinod. Actually, I yes. have selected as maybe because this may happen very much in the kindergarten type of scenario where mm -hmm. we have uh, students who are you know joining. I mean, they are just uh, only uh, near the cutoff of the age. 
and in mm-hmm. that scenario they may be like months older than their peers and they may come up with higher marks uh, in the initial okay. mostly in the field yes binoy that's exactly what had come up in my mind also the first time i had seen this question so completely agree okay I, i'm just feeling the rest of the people may now start putting in more of maybe or yes anyone with a yes why would it i mean no is the most logical right you're just being statistical in nature by default no significant difference we can i think we can end the poll now uh, uh, would be we can share the results with everyone right yeah hope everyone is able to see the responses right so a good 75% of you are saying no why would it right so okay great so let me show you the results of um, what happened in 2007 to 12 in india right these are indian births uh, let me also quickly tell you what there are two um, charts here one is indian birthdays and one is indian marks right so the way to read is uh, the first rows in both of them are the days of the month and the first column is the month name so the first box is really jan 1 and the darker blue means more number of births and in the below chart where we have marks red are lower marks and green are uh, better marks of course so what are your findings here guys um, i'm very curious to know please uh, feel free to use the audio as well now or the chat whatever you do everything that you are able to see every finding do not filter insights in your head currently so what do you see A- everything that you see please share essentially to answer this question okay. ash can you read it out it is same as per gandhi what does it mean it is same i think rajneet we can uh, take it up uh, i think okay we we've got an answer okay mm-hmm. started getting couple of answers just a yes. minute let's give because people who want to type it may take yes, a few sumit says is mark of students born in september are higher absolutely another yes. but if you is... see let's let's uh, at each comment let's see right uh, in yeah. fact this entire below bucket if you see after august they're scoring much better right guys yes compared to the first section yeah absolutely what's the next input yeah tripti says more children are born in between jan to june and marks are less and july to december the birth rate is uh, less but marks are high uh, absolutely so looks like marks do depend on the month they were born in huh? and okay. part of it is what um, uh, input we just got right uh, that someone who was born earlier when you are a 3 year old 3 year old versus 3 year 9 month old of course ratio wise you are almost you know 20% more in age so yes but Monish, uh, sorry monish feels when birthdays were on higher ratio marks were on lower ratio so in line yes. what we have just discussed yes i'll take up the next one yes asa feels months with lower uh, lower births are showing more marks so yes absolutely yeah. so absolutely spot on any other observations guys okay i'll i'll go ahead uh, inverse relation apurva thing yes it looks yes. like that right and uh, partially if you see it's logical like we just discussed if your cut off date is may 30th or june 30th right someone who was born last year may 30th maybe 4 year old and someone who's recently born maybe 3 year old so that ratio it's it's a you know 4 is to 3 ratio and in children that ratio really matters right so it's possible right 
but what is also happening here very sumit, interesting sumit has said that births are more on 5 10 20 and 50 5 10 50 absolutely you have really pulled it off very well guys everything that i really wanted to share you've been able to uh, you've been able to find as observation so yes we are seeing that there is far more you would see that there is far more births in april may june yes multiples of 5 10 are darker in shade yes there seems to be a relationship between uh, you know more births where there are more births there are lower marks right so spot on observations now what is the insight here right the insight here guys is yes one of them was what we just discussed that uh in in a lower age group uh, your birth date does matter but sometimes at least around that time what happened is that parents to save a year uh, for their children let's say the cut off date was may 30th or in some schools it was june 30th to save a year if their children were born in august right they went ahead and registered the date as an earlier date right and that was very insightful if you were a school right because you could go and mentor the parents to not do that because in a way it's hurting the children um, they are being pushed in a year earlier and they are ending up not performing that well right now if you are why the fives the tens are higher is really because if you have to make up a number would you be more comfortable making up 10th or 23rd right so i when i saw this for the first time i was so thankful that my son did not tell me oh mom i don't want to come out on 27th let me come on 30th because that's a multiple of 5 right so yes um it's much easier when you're forging when you're putting up uh, making up numbers you would rather put a 5 or 10 and uh, i thought this was a very good segue into the next session that i'm going to do Uh, on data storytelling because it's a very good data storytelling in one slide and at the same time uh, it, it's it's very insightful as well right so those were uh, the key takeaways here now um, i am about to summarize uh, to come this is the final slide and from everything that we do, did so far the requirement gathering framework i think if you try to perfect that it's going to be helpful Uh, the business frameworks i would recommend all of you to read up more if you don't already know them and use the bus the big useful and surprising insights checklist to filter your insights and all the personas that we discussed at the start i have recommendations for all of you so if you are a student i would recommend practice this problem solving on your next set of projects whether that comes from board infinity um, anything in college or even a kaggle kind of competition um, first start rather with domains that you are well aware of where you been a user like you been a student you been a um, um, a consumer so start maybe with education or marketing and then go on to more evolved or newer domains like let's say cyber security right also discuss some problems with different kinds of professionals to learn their perspective here if you are already a data and analytics professional i would say whatever organization you are in or whatever your clients is solve uh, list down their key problems right uh, like for example a marketing professional they are trying to decide how much to spend on a particular ad spend what should my budget be how should i pitch for more budget to my manager right around those problems i'll apply these frameworks and keep them in mind that's the why of everything you are going to do for them if you are a business professional like a marketing manager a cyber security operations manager who's trying to leverage analytics data science ai ml you are absolutely well aware of all the problems you're facing in that case you need to really have a very strong team uh mix of domain technology data and then apply all of this right and finally if you are an analytics leader um uh, i would recommend that you explain all of these processes to your team pick up your early adopters who you feel would be the ones who would really apply it well and once they start showing progress once you win from there show that win to everyone else and probably that way it will adopt right as important as it is to pitch this to your own employees equally it's important that your business stakeholders 
or your clients understand. So explain the benefits to them as well, right? So this is what I had for you. Uh, we've come to the concluding slide. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to take uh, any other question answers uh, that you may have. Started getting some good comments actually. Mr. Surendra says it's a very a really insightful session, and uh, Mohit has said it's a wonderful session. Gagandeep uh, says it's excellent, and Essa says it was a very helpful session. Thanks for organizing it. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. It's informative as per Moh Mohanish, and thank you for this uh, valuable session. Amul says this, and. Sonali also considers that this is an excellent and informative session and Binoy says it's a superb session and I think this thank you also from Donna for this. So, and Patro says it's an awesome session and this helps me, this has helped me a lot. Great, good to know. Guys, any questions from anyone or any thoughts um, even about how to start absorbing that in your regular life? Um, I'm happy to answer anything. Okay, you've been an, a, a wonderful audience, really. Thank you. Very, very interactive, um, just as we had hoped. Thank you. Deepak, what do you want when you say, can we get a request and take template? Uh, uh, so we can share, uh, guys, uh, you can, Gurtej, uh, um, we were going to share um, a link for them if they wanted their uh, certificates, right, for this session. Uh, Ma'am, we'll do the needful thing uh, for the students. We'll see that accordingly. Okay, all right. Yeah. So okay, Deepak, I can share a question. screenshot with you, not a problem. Sure, sure. That would be yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, Rajdeet, I have one question. Please, Sabina, yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, thank you for all the examples. They were really good, uh, uh, especially the Pareto chart and then the four quadrant you showed. Okay, mm -hmm. so that can be in the later uh, stage when we have, you know, lack of the data, we have all the data with us. At the initial mm -hmm. stage of the project right when we are not much aware about the data or sometimes it even happens you know uh, we are not uh, much aware about the business side of the because mm -hmm. it's client side we are not uh, we don't have that much of visibility so mm -hmm. how to start at the initial stage with these marketing strategies when the visibility is less we can say so data is not completely visible to us so basically you're saying that you don't know exactly what they're doing and what they want from us. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, yes. Or uh, when you're talking about marketing strategies, right? Uh, we are not exactly sure about, like you said, LinkedIn, it invested in LinkedIn and it, it gave a lot of value. What if we are not aware about uh, that? Uh, we won't be, of course. That, that level takes a lot of evolution to reach, definitely. Yeah. Um, see, one thing that will help in terms of a base layer is understanding that um, marketing whatever domain you are in right understanding that will be the first will be the starting point generally marketing manager in b2c would have similar roles across organizations they would be taking similar decisions specifics will change but more or less that way b2b will mostly be you know um, or industry wise also there may be differences but a marketing professional generally has a specific specific kind of problem operations will have a different one cyber security will have a, will have a different one so i think first thing if you understand that this next thing you should do is uh, let's say you're talking to a marketing person you in the in the kickoff conversations it's very important that this foundation is laid well right so you are able to understand what is their role why are they important in the company? What is What are their pain points currently, right? Uh, sometimes our clients may not be in a very 
uh, secure place themselves, right? And some of their uh, actions can be because of that. So uh, understanding all of those things, uh, after that, I would say all of the data, um, um, understanding what, what are the recent initiatives also, all of that will also help. After that, I think all the data and how we are going to help will really come in. Can I also add on? Please. Yes. So I think it's it's more about, you know, also uh, like Rajneet said, I'll just add on here more about also the data and the project life cycle going step by step. Like first step, of course, like uh, Rajneet said, uh, you know, the foundation. So that's what is the what are those things in terms of the people, process, technology or other elements? You need to check out them. You need to, you know, one by one, for example, if it is the people, what are the roles that needs to be assigned or are assigned both in your organization and the customer organization? organization so first you need to keep that in mind you know the understanding like Rajneet said collect the data you know uh, first it is a total raw data so you just try to find out ways to collect all the data and at this point uh, do the brainstorming it doesn't matter if it is useful or not so first just do the collection portion then is the processing analytics uh, framework that is going to come so maybe that is a pro you know way to start off get anything and everything you get then start analyzing it. And then the th third and final step could be the constant review because there could be constant changes, maybe in terms of your stakeholders or your customers, uh, you know, what dynamics is going over there, constant engagement with them, constant engagement with your own team uh, to understand the changes and, you know, kind of in, uh, absorb them also in this process. So this is what I think. Um, thanks uh, Apurva for the question and Rajneet for me to answer. Hope Apurva that answered your question. Yes, definitely. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we are on top of time, but if there is one last question, we can still take it. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone. Um, hope to see all of you four o'clock uh, next week, same place, same time. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the informative session. And uh, I'm getting a feedback from the students. So they really enjoyed the session and it was really amazing. So uh, dear participants, if you want the certificate of this uh, workshop, then you have to attend the next workshop on the same day. That is a Sunday <laughs> at 4 p.m. So that is a mandatory part uh, to get the certification of this uh, workshop. Once again, thank you so much for being a lovely audience. Thank you, thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks,